Before the 20th century, people knew about two basic forces, the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force. But in the course of the 20th century, when they started to study atoms and their interiors, it became clear that those forces were not the whole story. And in particular, one needed a very powerful force to hold atomic nuclei together, because gravity is much too weak. And the electromagnetic forces, in fact, wanted, want to explode nuclei, they're repulsive. Uh, so it ca came to the top of the agenda to determine what this force is. We were fortunate enough to glom onto what turned out to be the key that opened this door, uh, which is that people had observed that the, f the strong force had a very unusual character of becoming weaker at high energies or at short distances. This idea is very unusual. It's not the way gravitational forces work. They get stronger. It's not the way electromagnetic forces work. They get stronger at shorter distances. Uh, and it was very difficult to reconcile that behavior with the general principles that we uh, thought of as sacred of, of quantum mechanics and, and, and relativity. So we struggled to find a theoretical framework, a set of equations that reconciled all those things, those two, those basic principles and this funny behavior. And we found that there was basically just one way to do it. And so we proposed that that was the theory of the strong interaction. We were right. We got the right equations and they've been very fruitful. They've enabled us to understand the early universe better, to understand what happens at high energy accelerators much better and to have some success in constructing a way of unifying all the forces. Some outstanding examples of beauty in physics that are close to my heart are the equations that govern the strong interaction, so-called uh, quantum chromodynamics, which is almost ideally mathematically beautiful. It's an embodiment of symmetry. The whole structure of the theory is dictated by very simple mathematical principles. Another is axions, where we're led by small violations of symmetry that have been observed to a certain way of trying to explain why they're small that leads to very special equations that have remarkable properties. And part of the beauty is the equations, part of the beauty is that they may explain so much about how the world works. So these are remarkable instances where mathematical abstract beauty also turns out to be powerfully applied to describe reality. I do uh, probably several times a day think about the deep structure of everyday things that I'm encountering and it really enhances my experience of, of even of everyday life. My new book is called Fundamentals. 10 Keys to Reality. So my goal here is to present the most basic conclusions and attitudes and, and uh, uh, relationships that we can have with the physical world based on the best hard-won knowledge that, that we've accumulated. I would say two of the highlights for me that I sort of discovered in writing the book are the concept that to come into proper relationship with reality, you have to be born again. Babies, when they start to experience the world, have to make models for even the most basic things of how do you construct a three-dimensional world picture that you can move around in and know that there are separate objects. And so, uh, that has to be learned, and it's a difficult process. When you study the world scientifically, you learn that the world is actually quite different than the one you constructed as a child. And so you have to unlearn things. And I call that a process of being born again. The question that was central to my previous book, The Beautiful Question, was does the world embody beautiful ideas? I considered that very seriously from different points of view and came to what I think is a convincing answer, yes. <laughs> and uh, maybe the most convincing evidence of that is that equations that we 
propose based on idea, aesthetic ideas of uh, what would be the most balanced, economical, symmetrical, possible description of, uh, of a situation turn out to be the correct equations. <laughs> so it turns out that the operating system that governs the world is something we can also appreciate aesthetically, not just as a manual, so to speak.